Hello, my ghouls and gals. I am Kayla with Cafe Crash Now. Welcome back to the Crash Hub, where we talk about all things horror and sci-fi. And today we are talking about season 14, episode one of the new season of Doctor Who. So let's roll the credits. My dudes, welcome back. I'm so excited to be here to talk about the new episode of Doctor Who. I've been so excited. And they put out two episodes. So I have to like double work here to like oh, make sure to keep like this episode with this episode in my brain. I don't think it's gonna be that difficult because these both of these episodes were super iconic in so many ways. And I'm uh, I'm just here and I'm so excited to talk to you guys about it. But before we do that, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell. Yes, please ring that bell so then that way you don't miss a video from me when we start talking more about Doctor Who and other things on this channel. I'm a huge horror and sci-fi nerd and I love all things when it comes to that, the subgenres of horror and sci-fi. I love talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love talking about Dune, like all of that. And the beauty of sci-fi and horror is they Really together oh so nicely. So if you like to talk about things like that, urban legends when it comes to horror filmmaking, um, sci-fi journeys, like I said, like I mentioned with Dune, um, anything like that, then you are totally gonna love this channel. So please make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like the video, so that way you can get all things Cafe Crash now. We are talking about the first episode of Doctor Who season 14, which is Space Babies. And man, did Russell bring the quirk to this episode. So funny. When I read the title of this episode, I really wasn't sure what we were going to be getting with it. Um, but honestly, there was no disappointment. I was completely, I laughed. I laughed a lot during this episode. It was, it was very fun. So again, I, you know, I mentioned this in the holiday special video, but I'm not gonna sit here and like fully recap these videos because if you're watching this, I'm just gonna assume that you've watched the episode, okay? So you don't need me to give you a, a rundown, right? Like a breakdown of exactly what happened in the episode. I'm just hoping that you know that. If you want me to do like a breakdown, please let me know in the comments and then that way I can do that in the next video. Also, you may hear my cats in the background. They are there on a journey themselves and causing chaos for us. So I'm sorry about that ahead of time. So we meet Ruby and the doctor. Ruby decides to go on this cosmic journey with the doctor, which I mean, who would say no, honestly? I mean, come on. Like if the doctor showed up in his TARDIS and in my place, I, I am there. I am absolutely there 100%. Like, let's go, forget everything here. I might take my cats with me, maybe my partner, but you know, like we're going, like we're going, we're gonna explore space, all of that, no hesitation, okay? So they get in the TARDIS, they go, you have this fun little like butterfly effect scenario, which I think is really funny. And so we get this like iconic look from Ruby. And the thing that they already bring up is synchronicities. And this was brought up in the holiday special and it's now coming to play in this episode so it seems to be the theme it seems to be the thing that the doctor is even noticing especially when it comes to ruby all of the synchronicities and all of the energy that seems to be pulling around ruby which is very interesting so curious as to why everything is being pulled to this little magnet which is Ruby. So they get back in the TARDIS and they end up in a space station and the space station is run by babies. And so apparently these babies have not grown uh, in terms of their body. They've aged mentally. So they're like, I guess they're adults in baby bodies, but they, they also kind of act like babies sometimes. So I, I don't know. I, I was kind of confused by that, but I was also very amused by it. So I, I had a lot of fun. Eric was super fresh and hilarious. There were so many cute little conversations that like the doctor had with 
was it poppy like little lollipop cutie like she was just absolutely precious and so there's just a lot of this which seems to be another theme that they're really trying to introduce just of like just being yourself and being proud of who you are and where you come from and it doesn't even matter where you come from like who you are in this moment that is freaking beautiful and you should just really embrace that and enjoy that so I love that. I love that message. We all need to hear it. So thank you, doctor, for bringing encouragement to not only the space babies, but us watching. So then we have this like monster that's also in the basement kind of a thing. And so it's like this whole dynamic of like trying to figure out these space babies. Why were they left alone? How can we get them back to where they need to be? And we have a lot of fun dynamics between Ruby and the doctor. I enjoyed this episode a lot because we really got to see them work together. I just have to say, I really fell for Ruby more in this episode. She just has a really fun temperament. She plays a lot and she doesn't take, she doesn't take things so seriously. She's also not trying to like flirt and get with the doctor. So we're not playing that angle. You know, it's just, it feels like that like fun friendship vibe, which I just really enjoy for the doctor. And that's what he needs right now in his life is a friend and someone to just hang out with, right? He's a lonely guy. He's always lonely. That's why he needs a companion. So I think she's fitting the bill. I think Ruby's going to be really great. So I thought this episode did a really good job with really showing that with her and that dynamic. And so, yeah, we have this like boogeyman, which we find out is like made of boogers. So, ugh. Sir, really? Yeah, I told you that cats just run my life. They absolutely run my life. Did you know that we're doing a review of Doctor Who and you're totally messing it up? He doesn't care. He's just gonna be part of this, so here we are. So we have the boogie man, booger man, a booger creature that ended up actually being a creature that was born in that station, just like the babies. So it was created by the station, I guess, computer AI station. And we have this little booger guy that like was also created to play for the babies because the babies, you need like the bedtime stories. And so you need like the heroes and stuff like that, which I love that scene with Eric strolling down in his stroller and just with like his little wooden sword. And he's like going, <laughs> he's going after the boogeyman. Oh my God, that killed me. So we have the heroes and then we have the villains and we have the boogeyman, right? And so I thought that was really cute and a really fun play. So one of the things that I forgot to mention in the holiday special that I definitely want to make note is that I really love the new intro. So fun. The graphics are so cool with all of the vibrant colors and just the shots. Like when I saw that for the 60th anniversary, ugh, I just got chills. It was it was chef's kiss. It was so good. And I love like the new logo and everything because it's giving you like that retro vibe. Um, kind of, you know, taking it back, but also just really fun and fresh. So really appreciated that. The other thing that I thought was really fun in this episode was like the snapping of the fingers with like the light thing and the TARDIS. That was really cool. And it was all like the, the lighting dynamics of the TARDIS. Like that was just really fun. And did you notice his costume playing off of the female doctor with like the, like the rainbow and like the blue and red and yellow. I thought that was really cute. I saw that costume designer. I saw that little detail and I loved it. When they first arrive to the baby, the space baby space station and they run into the boogeyman, the doctor is scared and is hanging on to Ruby and they run. And I did have the re reaction of, that's really weird. That's not, that is not the doctor. Like that's not my doctor. He would never run. Like he would be more curious about what this creature is and basically almost get up close to then where it's like danger zone and then he takes off, you know? So I was very confused, but then I love that they like brought it up where he was like, why did I run? That's not like me. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay. So he hasn't changed that much. <laughs> I was just afraid. I'm like, wow, well, who is this new doctor that we have? Like he's really transitioned here. So good to note about that. And I thought that that was really cute and funny, like how they played that off. The thing that I also noticed in this episode, yeah, I noticed a lot of things, um, is that he kind of skirts over what he experienced, right? So, you know, the thing that I noticed about this episode and a little bit of the next one with the devil's cord is it is 
Base, this is a reboot. So it is teaching our new audiences about the doctor. So he's explaining the TARDIS. He's explaining his sonic screwdriver. He's explaining time and how that works and time travel and all of these things that of course us oldies we know about. Um, but you know, he, he's re-educating, he's teaching Ruby and therefore he's teaching us just about, um, and the new audiences just about all of that stuff. Kind of giving, and you know, giving like a brief recap of a little bit about you know what he's kind of been through a little bit he's starting around it though and especially with the trauma aspect and he does it like very quickly you know he's like oh yeah like my planet's gone like my people are gone like i'm the only one left they're, they're all dead they were massacred it was genocide and i got the vibe of he still hasn't healed from this like he's trying to convey that he has so I'm curious to see how that's going to play out in the season. Because I, I believe, I do believe that he has done the work, sure. But I don't think he is as healed as he thinks he is. And so talking about that quickly, you know, kind of thing, it's like rushing it. And, you know, it's like, oh, no, everything's right. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Is it, though? Mm, I don't think so. And that's okay. It's all right. When you're going through healing through trauma, you are on a journey and you have your ups and you have your lows, absolutely. There's no manual in terms of how to heal from trauma either and he has a lot. So I totally get it that he's working through stuff, but I just thought that was very interesting. I picked on that up on that pretty quickly. I also love the callback of him giving the phone to Ruby, it was like when Rose in the first season when Eccleston gives her the phone on the second episode and it's like, here, you can call your mom. Like, no matter what time you are in terms of, you know, year or whatever, like it's still gonna be Christmas day with your mom. So here, here's the phone. You've got a new little SIM card, you know, via the TARDIS, here you can call. So I, I love that callback. I thought that was really fun. So overall, this episode was really great in that it brought the fun, it brought the quirk, which is what we need, right? It's been a very serious and intense time for the Doctor the past few seasons that it's nice to have like these fun, really weird and strange episodes. I know there's probably some new people watching this that are like, what is this with space babies and nanny, you know, like <laughs> the boogeyman being made of boogers, like, what the hell am I watching? Listen, this is Doctor Who, guys. There's some weird things that happen on this show, but it's totally worth it. It's worth the journey. Just, just ride it, just ride it. Just ride the cosmic journey of the TARDIS and Doctor Who, and you're gonna have a absolute fantastic time. So yes, I really enjoyed this episode and I, I appreciated uh, the weird Russell T. I appreciate you, man. It was really fun. And we leave the episode with the doctor scanning Ruby's DNA. Who is this girl? What is she? That is the question, right? Like, again, we talked about this in the beginning where all of the things are being pulled into Ruby's direction and so many synchronicities. And, you know, he mentioned this even with the babies, right? All of these babies, they were abandoned in the space station. Ruby was an abandoned baby. The doctor was abandoned as well. So like, what is going on? There is a thing happening here. There are themes that are being dropped in our lap and we gotta figure it out. So yes, I have been noodling on this. And since he's scanning her DNA, I'm curious as to what will pop up. Does anybody have any theories? If you do, leave me a comment below because I, I love theories. I absolutely love theories. I think they're so fun. So please let me know in the comments kind of what you're thinking like do you have an idea of who Ruby's parents might be or what Ruby could be or you know why they're being pulled into this dynamic um you know I, I have like some thoughts but I don't want to like get into it just yet I kind of want to get into the season first enjoy it and then later as we go I may drop some ideas to kind of see what you guys think but if you like this video please hit the thumbs up hit subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss my next video, which I'll be talking about the next and latest Doctor Who episode of season 14. So thank you guys for being on this cosmic journey with me and I'll see you in the next episode.
Take care, guys.